you have and what's been said? Well, she's putting a mic down, hasn't she? Singing's over. Fat lady has finished singing, and um, unfortunately, I don't like her tune. But I've got to swallow it. It wasn't today that we um, let ourselves down, if we have at all this season. But um, it was in a run, second part of the season. It was in a, a situation which lots of clubs who come up get themselves in, and we found it very, very difficult to gain any momentum and confidence from anywhere. It wasn't until the last five games where we actually looked like my team again, and uh, unfortunately that was too late. But Again, you can tell I'm really proud of my team's efforts. They made me believe probably up until the fourth goal. I asked Steve Thompson when, when they got back to 2-2 whether that was enough, and he said it might be at the moment, but it turned out we needed to win here, which no one else has done. And, and you can see why, really. You can see how good their team was. You could see um, how professional the manager is as well, by the way, which really got on my nerves this, this early part of the week, and it's all irrelevant now. It's all irrelevant, you know. That man should be able to pick whatever team he likes whenever he likes, and you know, who on earth is, thinks they can tell him what to do? He's the most professional fellow, the best manager in my lifetime, and for a long, long time after, I'd imagine. So, unfortunately, his team and his squad and the structure of his club absolutely whooped mine, but we had a go. My players bridged all sorts of gaps, and we shocked them a little bit. Certainly would have done if that first chance would have gone in. But there you go. I don't blame anybody. That's just the way it goes. I actually honestly believed we could do it, and you might have think you might think I'm a liar, but I did. You know, the Champions League coming up. I was surprised at his strength in depth on the bench. I was surprised Vidic played and. In, in one way, I'd imagine that's a little bit of a feather in our cap. He's obviously got um, Alex McLeish, who's a great mate of his as well, so he was probably looking at all those permutations. But it was very, very exciting. We were part of that, and now we're not going to be. So that's just it. That's the way it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And I just believe that I lost my job at Leicester on the 22nd of May. I got this one on the 22nd of May two years ago. I was at Wembley 22nd of May, and I thought, come on, let's write another chapter. Unfortunately, it's the, the worst one, but I sit here as a very proud man of how we try to do things and um, probably got a very hard job now on my hands, to be honest. Why is that? Just bringing them back or keeping the team together? I don't think the team will be able to keep together. None of them will want to play in the championship. And the ones who are out of contract probably won't have to. And the better ones, if they're sought after, will be snapped up by the vultures. So it'll be a long time before I get a group that was as good as that, I believe, because they were absolutely exceptional to a man. From the start of my job here till the end of it, which is now, because that group will never be the same, I'm afraid. I hope there's some more um, bronze left on the uh, file coast because I'm sure one or two of these lads will go down in history like the great Sir Jimmy Armfield because the way some of them play for the money they're earning is quite phenomenal. How long will it take you to make yourself Do I look down to you, my friend? Last summer was the hardest summer I've ever had in my life. And if you'd have told me, truthfully speaking, that there's only five teams that take double lots of points off of you, and Man United's one of them, Chelsea's one of them, Arsenal's one of them, uh, Man City's one of them, and also Birmingham, I'd have probably took that at the start of the year. And then if you told me we'd get someone else off of everyone else and be in a lot of games and be in the lead and let a late goal in and might lose it, I'd have probably took that as well, to be honest. But I believed in my group. I believed how good they were. And, and they've done nothing but make me proud, really. The thing is, now, I know what they're earning. I know what they go back to. And none of them will want to do it. 
so I'm going to have the hardest job ever. I've got fans who will now expect me to get them back up. I've done it once, I might have to do it again, and there's the football vicious circle. But I'm very, very proud of these two years, and I'm very, very proud of what that group achieved for Blackpool, and I hope it be remembered in a fond way, not, oh, Charlie might have left, and oh, this and that, and right, and these boys should be remembered for what they've done. Whatever choice have I got, Ian, you know me. My job is to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. But this is the best sow's ear I've ever grabbed hold of. Charlie Adams' reputation's gone up, David Ball and all the rest of them, so it's yours as well. I've got a year on my contract and I'm looking forward to talking to the chairman and see what he wants to do with where his club was, where it is now and where we've gone back to. So I'm hoping that it's not back as far as it might have been before we started this season. Do you know that uh, incredibly you could be in Europe? No, we won't be. Because of the fair play reason? No chance. We're nowhere near it. You are. You are. You talked about this morning about why the centre after that. It's all about the last four games because the, the league table is the last 34, so they've got to have obviously already forced the last four. It's not just the booking and the yellow cards, it's technical staff behaviour. I think we all need a break, to be perfectly honest with you. We, we, we came into this league late. We've now got to go back to a league that starts at least a week, maybe two weeks earlier than the Premier League does, and these lads are running on empty. Plus the fact I had to tell them their options are being taken up on Monday because the Premier League said I had to. They wouldn't let us tell them today or tomorrow because that would have meant that Charlie would be out of contract. I had to tell them all on Monday who's staying and who's going. That didn't help me either, did it? They can say what they like. They rung me up and said, oh, we really love you, Ollie, but they haven't helped me at all. With the greatest respect, I'd like to tell them what I feel about how they do things, and, and I, hopefully I'll get the chance to, because I think every club gets a vote on what happens in this level. So if those bigger clubs get a vote all the time, how can anybody ever catch them if you're a minnow like us? What chances a minnow got now? How many, how many players, um, if any, that were in your squad today did you have to tell? Well, Richard Kingston was sat on the bench, knows he's not getting Marlon Airwood. If we went down, he knew he wasn't going to get it. Brett Olmerod, we haven't taken up his option because the chairman wasn't happy with how much he'd be on if we'd go down. So he wants to renegotiate with him, so even Brett Olmerod. So, you know, um, the options should have... Like last year, they'd have waited for five days after whenever our season finished, but because the wording was wrong, they made us, made him tell me that I had to do it. So I was fuming. Talk about demotivate my group, and yet we still played like that. Basically, we had to tell them what, who had those 10 players who had options, but that they would have their options taken on. Yeah, so you've got Ian Evat, he's going to go back to what he was on last year because we've taken up his option. And his money's gone halved again. So he's right back to square one. Talk about up a ladder and then down a snake. They feel that the snake's so long, why do we have to do that? Because the club's got all this extra money. But at the end of the day, Carl runs it, and he's got them. And Taylor Fletcher, Ever, who are? Sovereign. Keithy Sovereign. They all know that their wages, will they've benefited from nothing. For the whole two years at the moment. Well, because He'll tell you because he's our club no, secretary. The, the wording of the contract of the third Saturday in May, which in the football league you get, if you're still in your season, you get five days after the third Saturday. If you're still in the playoff, but the Premier League made us stick to the exact wording of the contract and have it, the decision with the players by the third Saturday in May, which was yesterday. And they, and they blamed us for our wording because it in was a not. League contract. It was a football league contract. We couldn't possibly do that as well. So all I said to them, surely, and he wouldn't let me speak to him. Common sense would let them tell me that on the biggest game of my life, even bigger than last year, that I should be able to tell the lads after the game. Mm. Ian, you said on Wednesday that you felt that everything had got some back of time. Do you still believe that? Well, you ask yourself, how would you have felt from being me on Monday? And I, I'm not. Listen, they'll... 
it's a great league, fantastic league, but I don't think the people in the league should run it. I think it should be run by people who tell them what to do. And I honestly believe that. Because there's lots of it that don't suit us. But it doesn't matter now. You won't have to hear from me again for at least 12 months. So, you know, just get on with it, write what you like. Hopefully it'll be nice about my lads because they deserve that. Hopefully it'll be nice about my supporters because they deserve that. And at the end of the day, I've got to dust myself down and go back. Luckily, I work for a chairman who ain't sacked me because I'm rubbish halfway through the season. Do you get what I mean? O hopefully, you know, because this game's completely mad, if you, if you ask me, sometimes. And it's good to be like me. I'm not mad. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. And football is a secret. Man United showed me that the day you have to keep possession of the ball. Every time we gave it to them, it was dangerous. No, I need to talk to them about the problems I've had this season. There's so many problems I want to talk to them about because the rules they've asked us to apply to and adhere to don't suit us. I can only have two people on loan. So I said to Matt, Premier League loans that. Is, is it what about the championship? No, they count as well. So I thought I could have two from the championship or from like punching and, and I can have two from, I couldn't. They counted. But I can have as many foreign lads under 21 as I like. I never had a scout go abroad. We didn't scout abroad last year. What chance did I have? Sign people blind? I couldn't do it. Oh, you can have as many under 21s and fill up your squad with that if you want. How could I do that? Oh, you've got to have 25 and you've got to name them in three weeks' time, four weeks' time. And then when I picked them, I weren't allowed to play them because apparently they weren't good enough. And I got fined 25 grand. Luckily, I didn't have to pay that myself. What a joke. What a joke. So, you know, at the end of the day, there's loads of things. But listen, it sounds... I. I have to be dignified, and I am dignified, and at the end of the day, well done to the other managers who were successful today, because I know the jobs that they've done. That was not an easy day. It was a wonderful day for the neutral, and unfortunately, we'll all be crying in our drink later on. Well, they won't next year, will they? So, that's it. You're famous for two seconds in football and then you're gone. I don't, no, no, no. You, you, you can never. You have to aim at the stars, don't you? You know, and then you might hit the moon, and that's what we've done. But you know. It's all about the structure of the club. Any club has to get a structure in place. And what, what the main man's done here is he's got a scouting network. He started off with the youth team and brought in some young players, got that moving. He wanted good young players. So then he didn't win anything for four years. Luckily, he got a, you ask him, he got a trophy. But he got that structure, right, where they get the best young ones. Then he's got a foreign network of scouting. So he's got that coming. And then they start to win things. And then he's, he's got it all struck. And he can have a big cigar. He's sat there. He's got it all working. So he doesn't have to buy anyone in January and grow, grab it people in January. He knows who he wants. He's told the board who he, who he wants to get. There's their targets. It's all no knee jerk. Bang, bang, bang. There you go. When his main player is ruckus in, they give him a new contract. It settles him down. He doesn't go to their biggest rivals over the road now. Brilliant. Fantastic management. But the structure of this club has taken him that long. The structure of my club will improve without a shadow of a doubt, and I'm proud of that. The relationship I have with the chairman at this club, I'm proud of that. So we've got to sit down and talk about where we want to go. I refuse to do it. I can't do that yet. Let's see who we got left. I don't think, to be perfectly honest with you, David Warren will want to stay. I don't think Stephen Craney will want to stay. I don't think Matt Jilks now will want to stay. Because I think they'll get better contracts somewhere else in possibly a higher level. So you take them three out, how important were they? Charlie Adam, what's going to happen to him? What's going to happen? So, you know, at the end of the day, that's what happens, isn't it?
And if you're successful, you go on again. If I was successful today, oh, I'd be buzzing now because I'd have been able to move my budget up again and I might have been able to re-sign them and I might have convinced Charlie to stay if that... I might have been able to give him a bigger contract and a new contract and a rise and we could have... Oh, dearie me. Our castle was made out of sand. But there's concrete underneath. <coughs> with Mr. Royston and how he does things. So let's move on. And what I'm going to say is, can we satisfy the ones who are already in contract, who we've just taken up their options? Because do they deserve to go back onto the ways they were on when I first took over the football club, which was nowhere near a decent championship wage? That's the truth. How many championship sides would want to pick our bones as well? So I'm ready. I'm ready for the fight. Thank Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much.